Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Susan McGuire, Director of Professional Development at ACCE, and I'm happy to welcome you to this webinar on the Certified Chamber Executive, or CCE, program. Um, this afternoon, we're going to be providing you with an introduction to our program and go over the basics around CCE eligibility and the application process. Um, we'll also walk, work, excuse me, we'll also walk through how the rest of the process works, including the essay, presentation, and exam components of it. Um, leading the webinar today will be Linda Raby, Chair of the CCE Commission, and Matt McCormick, Chair-Elect of the Commission. So before I turn the program over to Linda and Matt, I have just a few housekeeping notes. First, attendees are in listen-only mode during the webinar to avoid background noise. Second, we'll have a few minutes for questions at the end of the webinar. If you have questions, you can ask them by using the question function of the webinar. The question box is on the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, just open up that box, type in your question, and I will read the question to our panelists. Um, and if you have a question during the presentations, go ahead and type it in. Um, I'll, take, uh, I'll read the questions at the end, but type it in while you think of it. If we run out of time and don't get to all questions, um, or if you have a question that you would prefer to discuss with Linda or Matt or me offline, that's totally okay. We will have our contact information um, on the last slide. Um, so, uh, or if you typed in a question and we just haven't gotten to it yet, we will contact you. Um, also, uh, the handouts um, for the webinar are in the handout part of the webinar panel. Just open that up. I have the presentation slides there, um, the application, CCE application, application guidelines, and a few other resources. So um, we'll mention those during the webinar, and I'll also post them um, on our CCE page, and I will send everything to you. So um, if you'd like to download them now, you can, or you can wait until um, I send them to you. Um, and third, this webinar is being recorded. Um, it will be up on the ACCE website, on the ACC webinar page, and our CCE page no later than Monday, November 4th. Um, and as I said, I will post the other resources with it. So um, with that, I will go ahead and introduce our speakers. Linda Raby is President and CEO of the Rapid City Chamber of Commerce. As such, she has the privilege of being the chamber president in the beautiful Black Hills of South Dakota, known as the gateway to the mountain sculptures of Mount Rushmore and Crazy Horse. She's been in the chamber industry for 27 years and earned her CCE designation in 2003. Matt McCormick is the president and CEO of the Columbia, Missouri Chamber of Commerce, located in the heart of Missouri and home of the University of Missouri. Matt has been in the profession for 20 years, serving chambers in both Texas and Missouri, and Matt earned his CCE in 2012. So with that, Linda, I will pass the program on to you. Okay, thank you, Susan. Well, first of all, I just want to thank you all for joining us today. Um, this is pretty obvious, but the commission is pretty passionate about this program, and we're excited that you uh, want to be a part of it and to go through the process. So thank you for taking your time out of a busy day, I'm sure, to um, sit in and to learn more about it. We're excited to tell you all about it. Okay, Susan, you want me to just say flip? There we go. Okay, so why the CCE? Well, I mean, you can flip to the next one too. Go ahead and flip to the next slide. So you can see here we are meeting in DC as a group of commissioners that come together and we are a networking group. And we're just excited that you are joining us. This You are joining a group of peers that are amazing. You will love having the access to bounce off ideas as well as to ask them their best practices. And um, it's exciting that we span the whole nation, which is exciting. Okay, you can flip to the next one. Okay, so part of CCE is demonstrating catalytic leadership. And these are people, as you look at this picture, you will see that you will be surrounded by chamber execs doing amazing things across the nation, and you know what, even overseas. So I wanna, I wanna introduce some of these people. Kelly Hall is up at the top, and she's from Longview, Texas, and you can always click on her chamber and see some amazing things. Jay Byers is from Des Moines, Iowa, and we were at his um, community last year, or two years ago for the conference. And then also wanna talk about Anthony Parks, 
Anthony Parks is from Paris, France. So that tells you that we have CCEs from across the nation and overseas. Okay, you can flip to the next one. One of the things about getting your CCE is you are recognized then for excellence. This just shows a picture of uh, one of the people getting their CCE. I should have found out what that guy's name is, but I don't know. But it that is a Marvin Bond. Bond. Oh, it's Marvin who? I'm sorry. Marvin, Marvin, Marvin Bond. He's with, yeah, he's with the uh, Irving Lost Cleanest Texas Chamber. Oh, perfect. Okay. So, well, you, once you get it, you all get these wonderful pictures. It's a rigorous program, but I can tell you that it's worth every minute of the time you spend going through it. Um, this program is nationally and internationally recognized. And just so you know, once you get your CCE, there are a lot of chamber and economic development headhunters out there that use that as a screening process when they're looking for people to fill some of those positions. So it's a great way to reach out and it's a great way to open up some doors to you. Okay, go to the next slide. Okay, so the CCE process, what you need to know, and you can skip to the next one. The first thing you need to focus on is eligibility, and it's six years, and some chamber experience will count, and you can flip to the next one. Oh, sorry about that. That's okay. I just hate to read charts, because I figure you can read them quicker than I can, but I'll just touch on a few things. You know, the eligibility is one of those things that you need to look at all of those because there is, if you're a non-chamber senior level management, some of those years will count. If you're an executive director of a nonprofit, before you were a chamber exec, some of those years would count. And also if you work for a state chamber at a senior level. But your main, your main thing that you need to look at is, your best bet is to contact Susan and say, okay, Susan, look at this. And then Susan usually runs it by the, the commission just to say, how do you feel about this? Does it fit within those those levels to account for those six years of eligibility? Um, I can tell that, yeah, that we're open. Yeah, I'll just type in um, the most recent two years needs to be at a chamber, and but then up to four years can be at another organization that provides that same level of senior um, experience. Um, and that decision is made by the commission and staff, um, but mainly by the commission, and we'll look at all the circumstances. So if you're in a position where you've been in another um, area, another organization, type of organization, but you have that kind of experience and you think you're ready for the CCE, you have the points, you're otherwise ready, give me a call. Um, well before the sixth, the deadline, and we will, um, I will, uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. Okay, back to you, Linda. <laughs> nope, actually, it's flipping to you now. <laughs> oh, it's flipping to me. Okay. It's flipping the to application. you. All right. Um, the application date is January 6, 2020, and here is the rest of the general timeline. There's a lot more detailed timeline um, on our website, and I'll have those um website URLs for you, um, but in general, uh, applications and supporting materials do the sixth. Um, essays, which uh, Matt will talk a little bit about more, um, due in February. March 26th, we have oral presentations and interviews, and those are going to be in Omaha, um, so that you, if you're going to the board meeting, you can get your interview done as well. So it's, uh, I believe it's the date after day before, I can't remember, but it's in conjunction with those meetings there. Um, and then the CCE exam, we'll talk a little, a little bit more, um, can be taken anytime between <coughs> May 4th and June 5th. And of course, pre the CCEs are presented at the convention in July. Um, here's a little bit about application ba basics. I have a really detailed uh, guidance document that is on the handouts page. Um, on um, how you uh, complete the application, um, but um, it's a fillable PDF. It's on our website. Um, you'll need to uh, also provide some supporting documentation, including financial reviews and audits, which Matt will talk a little bit about. Um, you need 175 professional development points. Um, there's an application fee, res resume and references, and so on. So that is all on the website and more detail in the application guidelines. All right, 
I think, Max, over to you. I guess it's me. Well, let me start off with echoing Linda and Susan and how excited we are about you. Look, uh, everyone looking at uh, going through the CCE process and that you're on this phone call. Um, I can say from my personal experience, it is without, without a doubt one of the best things I've ever done in the industry, the 20 plus years I've been in. Uh, and it's and it's paid off tremendously. So um, thank you for taking time out of your very busy day to be on this phone call. Let's talk about the, the financial portion of CCE. This is one that tends to get a lot of conversation. Um, and so we, we've kind of just spelled it out as simplistic as we possibly can. Financials uh, are one of the most important things that you're going to be dealing with at your organization. Um, and so uh, we've put together this a number of years ago, and it's one of the processes that uh, we go through uh, with the financials. So you can see there, con conduct yearly outside financials at least uh, for at least the past three years. Uh, and you're going to have to submit two of those uh, most recent reviews with your application. One must be an audit. We break it down to two different levels of membership below 500,000 total revenue uh, or above 500,000 total revenue. And you see the difference there. It's going to be uh, under $500,000 total revenue is conduct an annual review by a certified financial firm and conduct an audit every three years. Once uh, uh, every three years, once every three years, you have to have an audit. And then over $500,000 is conduct an annual review by a certified financial firm again, uh, but conduct an audit every other year. Um, and so those are the standards of those. And as you saw before, you'll you'll have to turn in those and uh, you have to submit two of the most recent reviews. And one of those must be one of those audits that were done under that schedule. Okay. Susan, I think this goes back over to you. All right. So calculate your points. The next thing you should know. So how do you get to 175 points? Um, many different ways. Um, your education will count. Uh, your participation and attendance at um, ACCE conventions or other chamber association conferences and conventions participating in webinars, like the ones you're doing right now. Um, the uh, um, professional contributions, um, if you present at a convention, if you write an article for chamber executive, if you work as or, or volunteer as a mentor for ACCE, um, if you are a trainer at, a, at the sales conference, um, all of those things um, have points attached to them. Um, and then really important, leadership in chamber or community organizations, um, chamber associations, uh, regional, state associations, great place to get points, either um, if you're on the board, if you're on a task force, if you present or just attend. Um, and the same thing with the community organizations. And then finally, um, awards that you've received and then other certifications. So if you have the CAE, you get points for that. If you get the... Um, if you have a CFP or any, any other um, certifications. Uh, the IOM is counted under a special um, part of the application under Institute, and if you have completed four years, all four years of the IOM, you get 28 points, so that's pretty substantial. IOM is not required by any means, but um, you do get points for it. All right. Okay, just a sec. Susan, before you go on, um, I just want to highly encourage you to bring up the app, and Susan will give you all that connection. Bring that up uh, and start filling it out, and you'll quickly see where you've got some gaps or some things that, that you'll need to do. And I just highly encourage you to look at that and then purpose to put yourself in the position to be able to do that, in that right position, whether, you know, ask to write an article or ask to be a presenter or ask to do some of those things where you can fill in for your points. And your best bet to, to check to see if it would count or not is to um, talk to Susan. She'd be able to say, yeah, that would fit in, and it would give you this many points in different areas. But it's one of those things you have to get started before you actually see those gaps. Yes, absolutely. Getting um, uh, Downloading, filling out that draft application is a really, really good first step to um, see where you are, make a plan on how to move forward. And yes, ask if you can write, ask if you can present. And one of the people you can ask is me because uh, I can put you in touch with the right people here at ACCE, um, our communications folks, um, you know, folks who plan meetings and conferences and so on. So yes, um, uh, start looking at that application and that's the best way to understand where you are. All right, now we're at CCE Project. 
I think this is you, Matt. Yes. Yep, so CCE project, uh, this is the part that once you get through your points, you move forward with writing your essays. Um, there's two essays, one on your financial policies and procedures, uh, but then the other one is an essay on your project. Now, it, as one reminder, is this is the, the project that you do an essay on. This is the project will, that will also be the subject of your presentation uh, at your interview. And you can see the, there on the bottom right-hand corner the CCE presentation portion of it. Um, you got 15 minutes for a presentation, then 15 minutes of Q&A by the panel uh, on your presentation, and then that's followed by a 20 to 30 minute interview. Uh, and as Susan said before, those interviews are going to be done in Omaha this year, uh, March 22nd. Next is you take uh, a yeah, look let at me that just, next. Matt, yep. let me just interrupt. Uh -huh. I think I have March 22nd on this slide and March 26th on the previous slide, so I will clarify oh. that, correct it. I believe it's the 26th, but we'll, we'll get that set. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so if you take a look at the next slide there, you can kind of take a look at the different CC, way to, to, to judge your CCE project and way to see if there's uh, what what will fit and what doesn't. The great thing is, is A, Susan, as you'll hear one theme throughout this whole presentation, Susan's really the go-to person on everything. But the great thing that we do have with CCE is a number of years ago, we started up a project review uh, committee. So you'll submit your project uh title your project uh, idea, um, and then the review committee will take a look at it and say, yes, this works, or hey, this is a great idea, but make sure you cover these type of things in it and things like that. So as you can see there, it has to be a recent project uh, within the last three years. It has to impact your community or your organization, um, demonstrates professional skills and leadership ability. The main thing is this, is ha this has to be a project that you led for your organization. Uh, this is one of the tra biggest challenges that, that I think everybody probably struggles with because we're always trained to give credit to our team, to give credit to our board, to give credit to our members, uh, which that's where it needs to go. But this is a project that you did. This is the one time you use I language. This is what I did for the project to make it happen. And talk about the uh, results from that project, uh, the impact that it had project, and how you personally led that project. Um, so, as a, again, it's always one of those uh, to remember that this is also the project that you're going to be doing your presentation on. So, you need to know it forward and backwards and all the, uh, all the uh, parts of it. And Linda, I think okay. you're next. Okay. Um, one of the things I'm going to suggest before we jump off of that thing is that once you have a presentation together, you need to give it to your staff or give it to your board chair or whoever and make sure that you take a lot of those we things out and volunteers. It all has to be, I did this to motivate the volunteers, or I did this to do this, and make sure, like Matt said, that it's I language. Okay, so the next yep. one is find a mentor, and I always say, or two. I found that when I went through it that it was really important to have two mentors. I had one that was a male and one that was a female, because you know what? They have way different perspectives. You know, these mentors, they get to, they will review your application. They'll brainstorm. This is a person, a perfect person to give your presentation to because they know what, um, what is, what the judges and the, not the judges, but what the commissioner is looking for. And also they can help you with exams because the exams coming on, there's a lot of studying. And so it's a great way to call this mentor and just bounce off some ideas. Um, yeah, and also they can be your proctor if, if that works out. The proctors are usually someone that, that to do those exams are somewhere in local or someone that you know, someplace you can get easily to, to do that. But it's just really important to have those. Okay, flip to the next one, please. Real fast, Linda, if you don't mind. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go. I was gonna say, to link the last two topics we've discussed together, as Linda said, your mentors, become very instrumental, especially in your essays and preparing for your presentation. Uh, I know I sent my, I probably bugged my my mentors to death over my essay and probably sent it to them three or four times uh, to review and get feedback on. And it's always great to have more than just your eyes take a look at that, as Linda said. So make sure you use your mentors in those ways. Exactly. And so that brings us to the next slide. And if you look at that, you'll be able to click because Susan will send you these slides. But this is how you find your mentor. Now, some of you may already have a mentor that's been, been talking to you and encouraging you to go through the process, and that's perfect, and you're set up. But you can find CCE colleagues 
you know, you can call ACCE and Susan can help you or Institute or the State Chamber. There are lots of uh, CCEs, you know, in your community or your area. Some areas more than others, I can say that. But uh, another way to check, and I think that the recent CCE designates, designates are the great mentors that you can check on because they've just gone through the process and it is fresh in their mind. And so when you get this from Susan, you'll see where you can click right there, recent CCE, and that will bring you right up to a link to give you the ones that graduated within, is it just one year, Susan, or is it two years? Uh, yeah, I have the 2019 ones up there right now. Okay, but then you can also go to ACCE's website and you can click on CCE and you can get a full list of the CCEs around the country. So um, I would just, you know, take your time, work through them, make sure that you find ones that you connect with and that um, have done it, I think, more recently that they really understand. You can use a commissioner, but um, the only thing with that is you have to be really careful what they can do and what they can't do because they are the ones that then um, do the uh, exams for the oral exam. Okay, so flip to the next one. All right. So we need to talk to you a little bit about recommended reading, and the focus is on the body of knowledge. And so if go to the next one there. This is the recommended reading, and when you get this, you can click on it, and Susan will list out the recommended reading. Um, I personally think it's more than recommended. I think it's like highly, highly recommended or mandatory reading. Some people that have been in the business a long time think, oh, I've been in the business this long, I don't need to read this. Well, trust me, that's what the exam's over. So I would highly recommend you get the body of knowledge, read it through, and be prepared for those tests. The nice thing is, all this body of knowledge is a great library for your chamber. And so I have found myself going back and refreshing myself on some of this stuff. So it's, it's not a waste of money, it's stuff where it's a library for your chamber that you can access and um, gives you the best practices, which is good. We can tell you that some of the people that have failed the exam in the past, they'll, they'll uh, say that they did not take the time to do all the reading. So I highly recommend you getting the reading and do the due diligence. Um, and I would encourage you to get started now. If you're planning on going through the process, I would say get your body of knowledge and go you know, go forward. Okay, I think I turn it back to you, Matt. Yeah, so the next part is devoting some time to the process. It is a very doable process. Uh, and, and going back to what Linda was just talking about on the reading, start it now, dedicate that time. Uh, when we talk about devote some time, make sure that you, we all have very busy calendars. We all have uh, more, more meetings and more events and more programs than we can say grace over. But to go through this, it takes a dedication of time, and it takes a dedication uh, to the process. And so what my recommendation is always is, if you're able to, one of the things that I was able to do, which came from a couple of my mentors, was I designated a, a day every week. And every week, I worked with my staff, they worked with me, and worked with my board so that they knew that I would, from uh, 1 o'clock till 5 o'clock every Wednesday, I would uh, either study in my office, I'd close the door and study in my office, or I'd go home and study at my home office. But it's that dedication of time to go through, read, the, make sure you understand the body of knowledge well, read through uh, the recommended reading list, but it's all about devoting that time that works best for your schedule and for your studying habits. Um, but as Susan said, what usually happens if somebody doesn't make it through the process, the thing we usually hear is that they did not devote the time to put into this uh, that was needed. And they always, the next go around, they devote that time and boom, they get through it and they go, they go through the process um, in a much better fashion. And so uh, that's one of our biggest recommendations. Make sure, take a look at your schedule, take a look at your team schedule uh, and find a day that you can dedicate time every day of the week to get through your reading and study time. I think okay, the next and one's yours. I'm just go just going to, before I go to the next one, I'm just going to go back because we kind of skipped a little bit over this particular slide. I was a little bit late. This is um, the body of knowledge, and, and these are the summary topic areas. If you click on the link above, you'll see the entire one. Um, this basically is a very detailed list of skills and competencies that um, 
form the basis for ACCE's professional development program and the CCE program. So I, I like to recommend that um, uh, you look at it, see where you have basically had less experience. Everyone's career trajectory is different. So if you have had less experience in one area, say communications or membership than others, um, dive into these um, skills if in the real website. You click on it and more detailed skills come up. Uh, and then use our ACC information resources to get smarter on those issues. So start where you have less, um, less experience, less knowledge, and, and dive in. And feel free to use our information uh, resource um, folks here at ACCE, Jen Pack and her staff, if you have questions or need information um, to, on, on any particular areas. So now I'm going to go forward to maintain your certification. So if um, once you have passed the CCE requirements and you receive your CCE at the convention, um, then you can maintain your CCE uh, by um, every five years. There is a designation fee and you are required to submit um, a statement indicating that you've earned at least 15 professional development points. Um, earned the same way in attending convention, attending conferences, um, presenting, um, all, all those kinds of things. So this really is to ensure that you're keeping up to date, um, you're active and engaged in the pro pro in the profession, and you're continuing to contribute um, to to the profession and, and the folks who are coming up through it. So um, that's the maintenance requirements. You don't really have to um, worry about the the logistics about of it until five years after you um, after you get your CCE. But again, you'll need to be accruing the 15 points over the, that five year period. Um, also. Uh, Yes, designation fee actually is due in September after you receive it. The maintenance fee is $250. That's the one that's every five years. And if you have questions, you need a plan, please contact us. Um, as Linda indicated before, um, if you um, are thinking about this, if you get the application, you fill it out, um, you think you, you, you have 170 points, or you have 165, or maybe you have 182. You're somewhere around that point number, but and you're just not sure, please uh, give me a call or email. Um, uh, I can go over a draft application. I can make sure that you have things in the right places. We can talk and brainstorm if you have any points that you haven't thought of. Um, and if it's not going to be this year, we can talk about a plan to get you the points that you need over the next uh, several years. Um, in addition, um, you are welcome to contact any of the CCE commissioners. That part of their job is to serve as a resource for you all to talk through the process, to give advice and, and counsel. And we have commissioners all over the country. Uh, we have a complete list also on our website, um, and you can reference it there. So here's some, and I think. And then that's me, uh, ACCE staff. You can email me, as I said, um, and you can um, log on to our uh, CCE webpage for the application guidelines, SI guidelines, more information than, um, than you can even uh, imagine <laughs> about the CCE process. And so our question to you is, are you in? And if you are, Please send us an intent to apply form. That would really help us. Um, it helps us plan for the class, uh, make sure we have the resources and staff here. Um, it makes sure that we uh, remind you um, of any uh, of the deadlines coming up, um, that we uh, assist in the application process if you need it. So that's very, very helpful. If you fill out this form, um, email it to me. Uh, and so you get in our system as someone that is intending to be part of the 2020 class. Um, if you are thinking maybe more like 2021 or 2022, um, you can also fill it out and let us know that too. Then we'll just uh, keep that in our records and reach out to you as well. But this is um, something that will help us uh, 
planned for the upcoming um, class and uh, the intent to apply form is uploaded on the webinar page and we'll also send it to you. And so now, back to me. We'll, so anybody need have any questions that they would like to um, shoot out? Look. Have you had any, Susan, on the? Uh, I do not have any questions. So if you if you all have any questions, if um, please feel free to type them into the question box, and we can take them right now. If not, um, and you think of something later, as I said, please feel free to reach out. Um, and just to, as a reminder, um, we are recording the webinar. I'll send out the recording and all of the resource documents um, so that you have everything you need. All right. Well, I do not see anything. Linda, Matt, do you have any final yep. words of wisdom? Well, I just wanted to thank you all for your interest in this amazing program. And we are all hoping to see your application. Just know that the CCE commissioners are here and more than willing to help where they can. And that uh, Susan McGuire, you've got all of her contact, but she's available and is the expert on the program. And so feel free to give her a call. We are here to help, and we'd love to see you get through the program and join us. Uh, the only thing I'd, uh, else I'd have to add to that is also a thank you. Thank you for taking time. Thank you for looking uh, for being on here and looking at going through the process. This is a very doable process. Um, and I know sometimes everybody can. We all are busy, as I said before. We all have more than we can say grace over. Um, but make this a priority because it's a doable priority. It's one that can and will fit into your schedule, one that you can and will be able to, to make happen. Um, and we're all here to help help you, and we all want to make sure everybody goes through is successful. Um, but it's, it's easy to, to, to say, oh, I've got this coming up or i got this coming up. But at the end of the day, it's, we encourage you to make this a priority to do because it's a doable priority. And we'd love to see you see you through the program, and uh, we love seeing you walk across that stage. Okay, hey guys, we do have one question, and uh, I I'll just I don't know who uh, which one of you wants to take it, but um, the question is whether we can share the difference between CAE and CCE CCE as it relates to relevance. I guess relevance to the chamber profession or or relevance. Well, I, I'm not sure exactly what a CAE is. I do know somebody that has done it, but the people that have the CAE still choose to go ahead and get the CCE as well. Um, I know the CCE is basically focused on Chamber of Commerces, but the CAE is focused on nonprofit associations. I have friends running nonprofits and they get the CAE, but if they've got that and they come into the chamber world, they definitely get the CCE because that's what's nationally recognized in the chamber world. Matt, yeah, there's a number. Of, yeah, it just, it echo that. There's a number of people that have both if they've if they've switched between chamber and association. From my understanding, I'm more familiar, of course, with the CCE process. But as our CCE process is built on the uh, the chamber's body of knowledge that we reviewed earlier, CAE. Uh, is ran through the ASAE, um, and it is built on the association's body of knowledge, and is, is particular and specific to their body of knowledge. Um, and so, my encouragement is, if you have if you have your CAE, fantastic. Um, that will help you also in the long run. But if but I would also encourage you to do the CCE as it is specific to the chamber's body of knowledge. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Linda and Matt, for um, all the great information. And thank you, everyone, for your information and interest. Um, as I said, you will be getting an email from me with the recording and resources. We really hope you'll consider participating in the process this year. We would love to work with you. And please feel free to reach out with any questions. Let's see. There we go. Um, uh, I'd be happy to help, and I know that Matt and Linda would be as well. So uh, thanks again, everyone. Wishing everyone a wonderful afternoon. Happy Halloween, and we will uh, see you on the next ACCE webinar. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you.